This poem is the second part of Trevor and his dragon and the mayor's Christmas tree. It starts as the Christmas Eve parade ends. I hope you enjoy the story. Hatred and resentment ate away at Braswick's mind, giggling as she ranted. Her good angel just resigned. In her head was madness, nightmare visions real and stark. Dragons danced with giants round a yew tree in the dark. Braswick sent a message to a father bee in Rome, stating that some lawyers tried to seize young Trevor's home, asking that he bring the deeds to stop the mayor's game. Had to be pre-Christmas, and she signed our Trevor's name. Then she sent another to the parsonage by hand, stating Mayor Braswick had a claim upon the land. Father B must meet our Trev. We'll get the quickest flight. Please expect the bishop Christmas Eve, but late at night. Thinking of the message that she sent to Father B, Braswick drifted further from all sense and sanity. Now revenge and witchcraft coalesced inside her brain. Occultism and anger merged and sense went down the drain. Early Christmas morning, nearer midnight than the dawn, a very tired dragon closed his eyes and gave a yawn. Curled around the yew tree with his chin against the trunk, feeling warm and cosy from the turpentine he'd drunk. First there was a hiccup, then a belch, and then a snore. Then he started dreaming as our Trev crept out the door. Tiptoed very carefully around the ancient yew, waking sleeping dragons is a risky thing to do. Yew tree gently rustled as a greeting to his friend. Trev continued onwards, an appointment to attend. Quietly as possible across the gravel drive, then waited in the garage for the bishop to arrive. Father B stepped from his cab and strode across the lawn, unaware the Queen was there, and he was just a pawn. Hello, Bishop, purred the Queen. I'm making sure I win. Thrust her knife into his heart, spat payback will begin. Bishop fell, the mayor cackled, look how much he bleeds. Then she searched his pockets for the package with the deeds. Lifted up the envelope, revenge upon that man. Mayor Braswick wins again, it's such a perfect plan. Philip Green, ex-jailer in the east wing of the house, left the bedroom careful not to wake his sleeping spouse. Past the rooms with children sleeping top and tail in bed. Silently he headed through the door towards the shed. In the shed, the little man donned beard and bright red suit, grabbed the sack of presents and continued on his route. First down to the yew tree, where the dragon dreamed of food, which could be wood or terrorists, depending on his mood. Then into the kitchen, sprinkling flour upon the floor, leaving snowy footsteps from the chimney to the door. Carefully ascending up the stairs to Trevor's room, leaving bags of sweeties for his good friend to consume. Trevor waited patiently, was startled by a laugh. Mayor Mrs Braswick whacked his head with Bishop's staff. Stunned, he lay upon the floor. She held him by the nose, pouring potion in his mouth from bottle with a hose. Trevor writhed with burning pain, the potion drained his will. Mayor in her madness screamed, you monster, just stay still. I can make you hurt so bad, or I can make you well. Do exactly as I say, I need your soul to sell. Then she ordered Trevor, giant, stand up and obey. Walk down to the graveyard, there's a game I want to play. Trevor stumbled down the path towards the ruined church. Braswick followed ranting about monsters and research. May have prodded Trevor as they reached the Braswick crypt, opened up the iron door, then with the star she tripped and pushed our hero Trevor down into the mouldy gloom. Hissing, crawl right to the back, you'll find there's lots of room. On the floor a pentagram was chalked upon the ground, to the side an altar with black candles placed around, casting creepy shadows as they flickered in the draught. Welcome to the coven where I do my witching craft. Bound by Braswick's potion, Trevor called into the crypt. 
straight down through an open hole where writhing tendrils gripped his body, breaking both his fall and Mayor Bruswick's spell. An ancient voice spoke in his head. Hi, Trev. I hope you're well. Meanwhile, in the east wing, Mrs Green slid out of bed. Silently, she dressed herself in gowns of scarlet red. Mrs Claus then visited the children in their beds, filling stockings that were hung beside their sleeping heads. Into each, an orange and a little sugar mouse, followed by some sweeties that she found around the house. Last, there went the present that was all they could afford, since Mayor Braswick sacked the man that Mrs Green adored. Heading to the cellar, Mrs Claus checked all around. Everywhere was peaceful, gentle snores the only sound. Down into the darkness, with a candle held in front, to the place she thought was safe from Christmas present hunt. Feeling round the furthest wall, she pulled a brick aside, felt around the cavity for what she'd left inside. Little rootlets stroked her hand, then somebody grabbed it tight. Hello, Mrs Philip Green. I trust you're well tonight. Underneath the bishop, tiny tendrils split the ground, through which came a vapour and it wrapped itself around Bishop's dying body. Then it entered through his chest, glowing very gently. Thus the bishop was possessed. Mayor Braswick slammed the door with Trev inside the crypt, headed back towards a house and in her hand she gripped the long thin skinny knife with blades still wet with crimson red, past the portly bishop that by now should be quite dead. Straight into the side door where the Greens had made their home, taking out a book of spells, she opened up the tome, reading out the curses as she headed up the stairs, calling to the devil with demonic grunted prayers. Down inside the cellar, Mrs Green stopped, let me go. Sorry, said the yew tree, I just meant to say hello. Didn't mean to scare you, ancient voice said in her head, merely to detain you till the dragon has been fed. In the crypt, the ancient voice said, Trev, go wake your friend. Children in the parsonage will need him to defend against that loopy lady mare. She's really lost the plot. Waving sharpened knives around, she's headed for the cot. Philip Green, returning from his present dropping round, got back to the east wing and was greeted by the sound of Braswick mumbling curses as she headed up the stairs. Philip darted forward, hoped to catch her unawares. Then a glowing figure reached and grabbed him through the door, muffled mouth with flabby hand and pulled him to the floor. Philip struggled bravely, but the figure held him tight. Mayor Braswick reached the top and disappeared from sight. All that Philip Green could hear was footsteps and a voice. Then the man restraining said, stay here, you've got no choice. Then it all went silent and the glowing man let go. Philip dashed straight up the stairs and Dragon said, hello. Philip screamed, the mayor's here, you've got to let me through. Dragon smiled contentedly and chewed a platform shoe. Then he said, I'm standing guard, you didn't come past me. Now you hear I'm going back to sleep among the, under the tree. Philip dashed straight past him, searching every single place. But of evil, loopy mare, he didn't find a trace. Mrs Green was shaking as she grabbed her husband's arm. Please don't wake the children up, because no one's come to harm. Father B dreamed steeply. He was glowing on the floor, trying to remember what his arms and legs were for, thinking they were branches. And it's odd there's only two. Memories of being part of 15 metre you. Trevor and his dragon got up early Christmas day, woke the glowing bishop neath the yew tree where he lay, opened up their presents and together with their greens, sat around the yew tree acting out their Christmas scenes. Hope you enjoyed this story. Happy New Year. <laughs>